What's going on everybody? It's Adonis and you're watching Absolutely Tech. So WWDC was this week and they had some really cool announcements there, but I want to go over my top five favorite from WWDC. Let's get into it. So my first favorite announcement is Metal. Now they brought Metal out last year for iOS 8 for gaming and it took control over the um, OpenGL platform that most game developers have to go through to write um, applications to take advantage of performance from the processor. Now that's a lot of overhead, so Metal came and minimized that overhead so it can actually perform a lot better for gaming. And there's been a ton of improvement on iOS gaming. Now they brought Metal to the Mac. Not only is OpenGL associated with that, but now OpenCL as well. So if you don't know what those are, I would Wikipedia both of them, but one is for processing for computing and the other one is for graphics. Now they actually use that in the Mac now, not only for gaming and professional applications like the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, but also for the system as well. So they're talking about having an eight times improvement in rendering from Adobe Creative Cloud applications like After Effects. And then not to mention the gaming side of things that they've seen a 10X improvement as far as drawing in, in games. So that's pretty incredible. And they were saying that the computer is more efficient and it's actually snappier to use. So I'm very excited to see what that looks like. And they brought that same combination of OpenGL and OpenCL for Metal to the iOS platform this year as well for iOS 9. So there should be a big power increase for both as far as performance. So I cannot wait to get my hands on either one of those new softwares. So next up on my list is Notes. Now, Notes at the moment is an okay application. I use it all the time though. Um, however, there are some things as far as the experience for the user that could be improved and has been improved. So at the moment, you can import photos. You can do bold italicized and underlined text. Um, but that's kind of it as far as what you can do in the app. Even though if you add links to the application, it's not like a thumbnail or anything like that. It's just a link. So now they're allowing you to have links that have thumbnails inside of your notes and you can link them from the site that you're in already. You can actually use a share sheet and it'll import it into your notes. So that's awesome. Not to mention the ability to change the text size um, for different headings and things like that that you might want. Um, I'm not 100% sure if fonts were there. I can imagine they might be, but I need to double check as far as the um, developer software to see if that's included. What I did notice though is the ability to create checklists and then being able to check them off. Um, so if you go grocery shopping, things like that, you may not have to um, you know, resort to another application anymore. You can probably just put them in your notes and then check them off as you go down, so that's exciting. And then probably my favorite part is the ability to do drawings or sketches inside of notes. So it brings up a separate UI, you can do a doodle or whatever you want, and then it'll store it as an image inside of your notes. So that's pretty cool. So I'm really excited about that. Not to mention on the iPad with its new quick type keyboard, the ability to scroll with two fingers, the cursor through your notes, uh, being able to highlight things with two fingers on the actual keyboard, kind of like a trackpad. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like as well. So next up is multitasking on the iPad. Now, as far as anybody that has been using iOS has known that there's been some sort of multitasking, but not true side by side, you know, simultaneous multitasking in applications. Um, so what they did on the iPad now is brought a split screen multitasking view, which is pretty incredible. Um, and it's very similar to something you would see on Windows 8.1, Windows 10. Um, so it's pretty clever on how they did it though, as far as the interface. Um, first, you have a slide over feature which you can kind of slide in from the right hand side and it gives you a quick access to any of your applications that you have running in the background at the moment and you can toggle between both apps. Now the other cool thing is you can adjust the split there on the iPad Air 2 and actually use simultaneous multitasking which will take advantage of you know both applications at the same time so if i'm running notes in safari i can do them at the same time you know take notes while i'm inside the website that i'm in so that's pretty clever another cool thing that i like as well is the picture in picture now i've seen this on other um, builds of android so it wasn't necessarily android that had it but um you know, maybe some ROMs or some things that other manufacturers have skinned over. The picture in picture on this is pretty clever. I'm not 100% sure though, if it's, you know, um, set up for specific applications or if it's for all the video players inside of um, iOS. So that's something that still hasn't been seen yet, but if it is, that's gonna be awesome to be able to watch YouTube videos or if you're on a streaming site, 
that plays video to be able to jump through your apps and still watch that video. So that's exciting to see, and hopefully we get more over the upcoming months. So one of the bigger announcements was the native applications for the Apple Watch. Now, since the Apple Watch has been out, people have been asking, what can you do without the phone? What can you do with a watch alone? And a lot of that has come down to how the, how the API is set up. It requires at the moment the UI to be on the watch and the phone, but the app logic is only on the phone. So the watch has to talk over Bluetooth to get the information for the app. Now, what they're doing in the next generation of the OS for the watch is allowing that app logic to be stored onto the watch. So that's going to allow better improvement. And also with the ability uh, that they brought in the new OS for Wi-Fi, you can actually get information over the internet from known Wi-Fi uh, sources directly to the watch. Now, last but not least is Apple Music. Now, this was a big one. Now, some people are saying, oh, it's gonna kill Spotify. Others are like, no, Spotify is still way better. And so there's a ton of different debates going on right now. But one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this was that Apple made it a complete thought. So right now, if you're a content creator that does music, um, your following has to follow you on other platforms. So if they listen to your music on Spotify or Tidal, or you know Amazon Locker or whatever they listen to your stuff on, they have to follow you somewhere else. So they have to look up your social media handles. If they don't know them, they have to look them up. Um, and then whatever various social media you're on, they have to go to those places to follow you. So if you do certain things on Instagram that you don't do on Twitter or so forth, you know, or however your setup is, it's gonna be very, it's very convoluted at the moment. So now they're gonna making it a lot simpler for the artist and the people that follow the artist as well. So having a place to have you know your photos and your videos of your upcoming events or projects you're working on, not to mention being able to stream your music, that's pretty awesome. And the new artist is probably even better for them because now you have a place to you know connect with the people that you're following, building a bigger following. And with the conjunction with Beats, uh, Beats One, their streaming radio service, they're actually focused on putting out great music, period. It's not, hey, this new artist that just came out from X label, they're hot right now, let's play the record. No, they're sourcing through all the music that they feel are good music. Now, we don't know if there's gonna be new radio DJs coming to the future, but the three that they have right now are pretty incredible. So I would highly advise checking out their ad that they have for Beats One to kind of get an idea of who those people are. Zane Lowe is one of them, I'm super excited about that. But what do you guys think? Do you think that's something that is going to be a good competitor with Spotify? I do know that their pricing right now is extremely competitive, so $9.99, for a single and then a six fam a six member family pack for $14.99. So that's pretty competitive as far as pricing, but let me know down below what you guys think about that. All right, guys, so that concludes my top five of WWDC. Did I leave anything out that you thought should have been on that list? Let me know down below what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any suggestions for new videos, let me know down below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Till next time, guys. See you later.